Relations of the parotid gland. The parotid gland is related to anterior border of the gland related to the following from above downwards. Number one, temporal branch of the facial nerve. Number two, zygomatic branch of the facial nerve. Then transverse facial artery. It is a branch from superficial temporal artery. Then accessory part of the parotid gland lies at the anterior border. Then buccal branches of the facial nerve. Then mandibular branch of the facial nerve. This is the structures lies at the anterior border of the gland from above downwards. Then the lateral surface or superficial surface of the gland covered by skin and fascia. Then parotid lymph nodes. Then great auricular nerve. This is the structures related to the anterior border of the parotid gland. This is the temporal branches, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular. This is the parotid duct. And above the duct, there is accessory part of the parotid gland. Anteromedial surface of the gland is related to the ramus of the mandible and two muscles that attach it to it, masseter muscle on the lateral surface, then medial tergoid muscle on the medial surface. Posteromedial surface related to mastoid process and two muscles that attach it to it, sternomastoid and the vestibule of the gastric muscles. Then styloid process and the attached muscle, then carotid sheath with its vessels and the lower four cranial nerves. The deep part of the gland comes in contact with the pharyngeal wall. This is the parotid gland. This is a relation in the deep surface. This is the relation on the deep surface of the parotid gland. Then anteromedial surface. This is the posteromedial surface, ramus of the mandible and muscle attached to it. Posteromedial mastoid process and the muscles attached to it as vestibular of the gastric and sternomastoid muscle. The structures lies inside the parotid gland. Then number one, facial nerve enter the upper part of the posteromedial surface of the gland, close to stylomastoid foramen. It passes forward superficial to the retromandibular vein and divides into five terminal branches temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, and cervical. The retromandibular vein is formed within the gland behind the neck of the mandible by union between superficial temporal vein and the maxillary vein and leave the lower end of the gland as two divisions, anterior division united with the anterior facial vein, posterior division united with the posterior auricular to form the external jugular vein. External carotid artery lies also inside the gland. It enters its posteromedial surface and ascends deep to the retromandibular vein and divides opposite the neck of the mandible into two terminals. Number one, maxillary artery and superficial temporal artery. Then deep parotid lymph nodes, they are embedded in the substance of the gland around the blood vessels. Lastly, auriculotemporal nerve has a short course within the gland. This is the gland, parotid, and this is the structures inside the gland from superficial to deep also, this is the structure, super, this is the facial nerve, this is the retromandibular vein, and the most deeply structure is the external carotid artery. The nerve supply of the gland, parasympathetic supply, is secretory motor to the gland, comes from glossopharyngeal nerve, is the ninth cranial nerve, gives it its tympanic branch. Sometimes it's called Jacobson nerve, which enter the middle ear, forming the tympanic plexus, and leave the middle ear as lesser petrosal nerve, and it comes out from the cranial cavity through 
the foramen oval to relay in the otic ganglion, which is suspended in the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The postganglionic fibers that arises from the otic ganglion join the auriculotemporal nerve to reach the parotid gland. Then sympathetic fibers from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion, which gives the sympathetic plexus around the external carotid artery. Then sensory fiber from the auriculotemporal nerve. This is the nerve supply to the parotid gland comes, comes from glossopharyngeal as tympanic, then comes out through the foramen oval, then joins the auriculotemporal nerve to reach the parotid gland. Then parotid duct comes from the anterior border of the gland and runs forwards on the masseter muscle to pierce the check and opens in the vestibule of the mouth opposite upper second molar tooth. There is a part of the gland lying above the parotid duct called accessory parotid gland. The surface anatomy of the parotid duct, it corresponds to middle third of a line drawn from the tragus of the ear to a point midway between ala of the nose and the red margin of the upper lip. This is the parotid duct piercing the paxinator muscle to open in the vestibule of the mouth of the upper second molar tooth. Relation of the parotid duct, the duct runs on the masseter below the accessory part of the parotid gland and accompanied with the buccal branches of the facial nerve. The duct reaches the vestibule of the mouth after piercing the following structures. Buccal bed of fat in the check, then buccopharyngeal fascia covering the buccinator muscle, then buccinator muscle itself, and the mucosa of the vestibule of the mouth. This is the relations of the parotid gland, and it is duct. The duct here comes pass on the masseter, piercing buccinator muscle to open in the vestibule of the mouth of the upper second molar tooth.